Hi there, this is a tutorial for the group manipulation scripts in Scriptorium. First of all, we need to collect some different groups to demonstrate what we can do. So here is a setup with six basic contact instruments, each containing one group of samples. So we've got a piano, a music box, a female choir, a dulcimer, a harp, and a carillon. And what we're going to do is take each of these groups, join them into one instrument, so we can demonstrate the script. So, we open an instrument, an Open Contacts Group Editor here, copy it using this menu in the Group Editor, and then paste it into the piano instrument here. And one by one, we'll get the groups from each of the other instruments. The idea of this is we'll end up with one instrument with lots of different sounds, each in their own group. The dulcimer. The harp group. Copy that. Paste it in. One more. Let's get the carillon group. Copy it. Paste it. So now this instrument has six different groups with a different sound in each group. So we'll just rename this many groups so we know it's not just a piano anymore. Now when you play this, we just get everything playing together. Which isn't particularly interesting, so let's go to the script editor and select the group delay script, and you'll see what happens. Here you can see that we have five layers, each with a selection of controls, and each layer can use one of the groups that you see below in the group editor. If we turn on one layer, set this layer to the piano with no delay, now we only hear that group when we play a key. So we can turn on another layer, set the delay to a quarter note, and you can see that this layer's pitch is shifted up by seven semitones as well. Change it to an eighth note. Change it to a music box. So the music box is an eighth note later than the piano. Let's make another group with the harp. We'll set this to a quarter note delay. Activate the group. So now we have three sounds. Let's do one more, another music box, shifted an octave. Set it to a half note delay. Activate it. Bring down the level of touch. So in this way you can get an interesting rhythmic response to the notes you play. And of course you can swap all the groups around, or the rhythmic values to change its behavior. Let's just try swapping the groups assigned to each layer a bit randomly. A choir on the second one, carol on there, dulcimer at the end. So you can see there's lots of possibilities here, depending on what groups you have and how you set it up. So let's go and try another script now that uses different groups. Let's try the Group Sequencer script. And this script basically works a bit like a step sequencer, but instead of notes, each step is defining which group should be played. 
Over here you've got the length, which is set to 8, and if you click on these sliders you can see below which group you're selecting. You can step through all of the groups that are in that instrument. So we'll put the first one to piano, second one to the music box, third one to the dulcimer, next one to the harp, the dulcimer again, the music box again, harp again, and one more on the dulcimer. Now when we play, each note we play plays the next group in the step sequence. Do it with chords. And you can turn on autoplay, which will repeat notes at the speed you set. And you can also define a reset key on your keyboard, which is set over here on the right. It's set to 96 at the moment. And when you press key 96, which is C6, the sequence will reset itself and start again from the front. One more time. So the reset key is quite useful if you need to position the sequence in your piece of music. The sequence can be up to 32 steps in length, and you can use this menu to randomize the steps. Which doesn't sound very good in this case, but if you had a different selection of groups in your instrument it could be useful. Let's try another instrument that uses group sequence and see what we have. Now in this instrument, the groups are more closely musically related. So you see we've got that sound on the first step, a splash sound on the second step, an organ sound here, another organ sound there, that first sound again, organ sounds. So you can hear that this will step through these sounds now. But let's turn on autoplay. So you get the idea of how this could be an interesting rhythmic tool. Now let's go back to our first instrument again, and we're going to look at a script called Mobile. Now Mobile is another group manipulation script, but it's a bit more of a random music generator. It's based on the idea of a hanging mobile, like in a child's nursery or wind chimes, for example. The idea is to allow sounds to drift around in a circular sequence. It does this by repeating notes in each group, but randomly changing their length and their loop points. And these are defined by the speed menu here and the grid size here. Each group is treated as an object, like an object hanging from a mobile. So we've got the piano group on. You can hear that it's repeating slightly unevenly. I'm just holding down one key. And if we make the grid longer, you can hear the notes become longer. So let's turn on a second group, or object. Now you should be able to hear that the two groups aren't playing in synchronization, they're drifting separately from each other. Let's turn on a third group. And let's turn on a fourth. Let's make the fourth one be the dulcimer. And finally, in the fifth position, let's put the carol on. A bit loud, let's bring that down. Now you 
can see here you've got a velocity amount for each object, which introduces a random velocity offset to the note you've played. This will vary the velocity by the amount you enter. On the second page you have a note offset, and this will move the note played up and down a range on the keyboard within the number of keys you set here. Now I'm just making the grid a bit bigger. Gonna change some of these groups around. See what we get. I'm just holding down sustained chords. You're hearing the output of the mobile at the moment. Over here on the left, you've got an align button. And what this will do is set all the positions of each group the same. So when you next play a chord or a note, they'll all sound together before they start drifting apart. You can see below the object selection menus, there's a control called weight. This value will decrease the likelihood of the object drifting. So if you set the weight to zero, it'll drift a lot. If you set it to 100, it won't drift at all. This is useful if you want some sounds to move and others to stay static. So you can hear this is all a bit random. So let's go and have a listen to another instrument that we set up in advance a bit more precisely to hear how mobile can sound also. Here's Kamiya Candy, it's got four groups. Let's just turn on group solo so you can hear each of the groups separately. Here's the sawtooth wave. This is an organ. There's a kind of glockenspiel type thing over here. And there's a glassy percussion type sound, all drifting separately, and all together. So that's mobile for all your ambient drifting sounds. <laughs>